All right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about a survival knife that didn't make sense until it did. Now this is the Mora Knife, or Mora Knave, whatever you wanna say, Mora um, Pathfinder. And this thing is crazy, and I'm still not even completely sold on this knife, but it was a knife that I only recently was thinking about and it finally kind of made sense to me why this knife actually isn't horrible for survival. Now let's break down some of the basics of this knife before we get into why I think this thing actually isn't horrible for survival. So first off, this knife for a Bushcraft Black series, and that partly I think is what turned me off to this knife for so long, was that this handle here is the same exact handle that is on the more Bushcraft Black and a handful of the other kind of Bushcraft um, series blades for Mora. And because of that, I always felt like this handle was disproportionately small to this blade, and I still do think that. However, it does it doesn't feel horrible in hand. Now, I do wish personally that Mora would have redesigned this knife, or when they made the Pathfinder, they would have made an entirely different like handle for it. But I understand Mora being Mora and the most cost-effective means of making a knife, you know, reasonably budget, is not to make you know a like its own handle and like its own design. So it does work in aesthetically. It doesn't look horrible in person, but it is a little bit weird. And definitely there is a bit of a blade forward um, design or like obviously the weighting is definitely blade forward. So it's not necessarily the most intuitive knife or most attractive. So lastly, to kind of finish up on it, of course, you have a DLC coated blade and the blade itself is C100, which is essentially a Swedish um, version of 1095 high carbon. So overall, you do have a pretty good, albeit a little weird kind of setup, but you do have a good potential for a survival knife. Now, of course, it's also worth noting, this is a near full tang knife. So the tang extends to somewhere about like three quarters of the way into the handle. So we're talking about, you know, somewhere from here to here, you know, I'm not entirely sure where exactly it dead ends, but but somewhere around here is where it dead ends. So we're dealing with a near, near full tang, and a lot of people have said in previous videos things about things like the SRK with a near full tang, things about the more clipper with a near full tang. You know, these types of knives are weak. And once again, I'll continue to reiterate, you know, the big thing about near full tang versus even full tang knives is the fact that um, every knife has a realistic level of durability, and so, anything pushed to the absolute max limits will break and will, you know, eventually just self-destruct. But at some point there is before that, hopefully a level of a reasonable durability. And so for me and my findings with the more like three quarter tang knives, once again, the cold steel SRK, the reasonable durability is there. I can still go and baton trees down with this. I can still beat this through the, the wood that I need to, to make shelters. And so once again, if you try to baton this through a rock, Will it break? Potentially, right? Now, also, if you try to baton this to a rock, will you destroy the edge? Definitely. So it's one of those things that it's like, you know, you could break the knife batoning it through a piece of rebar, but also you'll destroy the edge. So don't do that, right? So, you, you know, you can find the upper limits of these knives and they certainly will break at some point, but the realistic durability is there. Now, that being said, what do I like about this knife and why did it suddenly make sense to me for a survival knife? So first off, I'm not the largest fan of quite how large this is. This is a 6.7 inch blade. I think it's a little bit on the long side for what this handle is because this handle what's going to be borrowed from the bushcraft black isn't a super small handle but it's also not a super roomy handle typically even looking at something like a cold steel srk you know my hand is about a medium-sized hand so i don't have huge hands but you guys can see here there's plenty of room here for me i kind of like to call it my sprawling space i can kind of sprawl out on the handle um, with the bushcraft black you do not have that kind of sprawling space your hand is very much there and so once again not unusable but a little bit bit tight for how long the handle is and once again whenever how long the blade is and once again when you have a longer blade your expectation is going to be leaning more into chopping now that's another thing this knife probably will not do the best at chopping partly because it has a thinner blade stock but also too because this is a scandy grind so it's not really going to be 
biting deeply into wood or as deeply as something like a flat grind that has more material removed off of the actual face of the blade. So you're gonna be limited with chopping. Now, in my opinion, once again, that really doesn't affect me or my personal take on this knife because if I'm going to be trying to, let's just say, fell a tree for shelter building, I'm going to probably be batoning the knife into the tree as opposed to trying to just whack at the tree because there's so many videos, even my videos, where if you try to just chop at a piece of wood, you're realistically not gonna make that much progress. Whereas if you take the knife and you baton it through the piece of wood, not only is that going to be a lot more comfortable and save a lot more energy, but it's also gonna be a lot more effective. So for me, once again, it not being able to chop really isn't a deal breaker. I do, I will say I do like the length of the blade because it does give you a good spanning. So, you know, when you lay this on a piece of wood to baton it through it, it is going to do well in that regard. And this, of course, being about an eighth of an inch thick should do just fine when it comes to batoning. Now, like I said, some of the reasons why it does make sense, this longer blade helps with survival tasks, being able to span pieces of wood, being able to baton. But I also do really like the fact that this is a not like non-exposed tang blade. And so it's a near full tang, but it's also not exposed. So it's also fully rubberized. So what this means is it gives you good temperature control. This can be a very temperature neutral handle, including in freezing conditions like in winter, um, this is going to be a very comfy handle to hold on to. And once again, that um, heavily rubberized grip is going to give you a lot of grip, not only when the handle gets wet or bloody, or also in the cold when everything tends to freeze up and not be as nice. So it's going to give you a lot of grip in a good variety of different conditions. And that is something that I think is really worthwhile noting about this handle. And once again, the overall idea of this knife. And that's when it began to make more sense to me of why I would actually want something like this as a survival knife. For me, in my opinion, this makes a really good budget offering if you don't wanna go with something like a Cold Steel SRK and SK five or if you want something that just has a longer blade length because the cold steel srk as you guys can see here like um blade to blade, even just where the blade steel starts, if we're not even talking about, because classic Mora, you know, your blade actually starts at the very end of the handle. So it gives you even more cutting edge than something like a Cold Steel SRK. So this has pretty much an inch on the Cold Steel SRK of cutting edge. So it gives you a little bit more usability, but also still a very budget price range on this guy. So if you're looking for something that's a budget blade that's going to have a longer length and still be a cold weather friendly survival knife, that's where the Pathfinder starts to really make a lot of sense. And that's when I finally realized that I actually want one of these for more in-depth testing and field use up in Alaska. So that's why I ended up picking one up and why I think they are actually really cool, winter friendly, budget friendly survival knives. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video in the breakdown of the Cold, Cold Steel Mora Pathfinder. It is a very weird knife. Still as weird like I said, the blade shape. I just It's just like they took the blade shape of a Bushcraft Black and like enlarged and just made it bigger with keeping the handle the exact same. And once again, I know why Mora did this. It's to keep the price point low. And so I do appreciate that part of it. But it is still a very peculiar knife. But it's still also a pretty cool knife that is worth while checking out. Lastly, just finishing up on it, the sheath itself is very weird. Um, it's not my favorite, but it is completely functional and you know, it, it works. So it's not my favorite. It says it's mo like Molly compatible, but I don't know, there's really nothing here to like lock it into Molly webbing. And I'm definitely not the largest fan of it. If I continue to regularly carry this, I will probably replace its sheath because it just has a kind of plastic sleeve that it slides into and it has this button for closure. I will say kudos to Mora for this button closure because most budget knives, like you can still see the blade just pop right out. This actually is pretty tight. Like even pulling this out, you can't really expose the blade. So at least the sheath is very functional in typical Mora fashion. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless. And I'm